TCU fans are filling up the new Eamon Carter Stadium because the Horn Frogs have the nation's longest winning streak at 12. A top 10 defense in eight categories. And the school's all time winning his coach in Gary Patterson. Today, in their first ever Big 12 home game, they face 2011 Big 12 Co Defensive Player of the Year, A.J. Clyde, and the Iowa State Cyclones. Welcome to Eamon Carter Stadium in Fort Worth, Texas, for Fox College Football. Today, the 3 and 1 Iowa State Cyclones battle the undefeated and 15th ranked TCU Horn Frogs. And with that, we say hello and welcome Mike Morgan from Fort Worth, Texas, home of the nation's longest winning streak for TCU at 12 games. Really, this has been one of the most underrated programs for the last 15 years, and now they're in one of the most heralded conferences, the Big 12. Today, TCU plays its first ever Big 12 home game against the always dangerous Iowa State program. The weather has gotten chilly, and as we bring in my partner, J.C. Pearson, with that chilly weather and some windy skies, more importance on the ground game, and for TCU, it all starts with Matthew Tucker. It does, and I have a feeling that they're going to rely on Matthew Tucker in that run game an awful lot today. If they can get Matthew Tucker going early in the run game, it's really going to help open up their passing attack, and that's the kind of balance that they're going to have to have today uh, to have success against Iowa State. Meanwhile, Paul Rhodes has done an outstanding job now in his fourth year with the Iowa State program. He's built his rep on defense, and they've got one of the best tandems of linebackers in the country, beginning with A.J. Klein. Yeah, and A.J. Klein is one of the best linebackers in the entire country. Last year, he was the co-defensive player uh, of the year in the Big 12, and he's not just a run stuffer linebacker. His interception for a touchdown last week tied an NCAA record for interceptions for touchdowns by a linebacker. So he's a guy that can get it done all over the football field. Let's check in with a third member of our broadcasting team, Laura McKeeman. Mike, TCU head coach Gary Patterson has announced that starting quarterback Casey Pahal is suspended indefinitely after being arrested Thursday near TCU's campus on suspicions of a DWI. The police report states an officer saw Pahal's car hit a curb and failed to stop at a stop sign. Patterson released this statement about his starter. My job as a head coach is to win games, educate our kids, and help them with their lives. He's suspended from competition until we come up with a good answer for him. Mike and JC, the answer today is Trevon Boykin, who adds a new dimension to TCU's offense with his legs. Well, he certainly does, JC, but obviously the flip side of that is the lack of experience without Paul Hall in the lineup. Oh, no question about it. I mean, they lose a lot with, with Casey Paul Hall out of the game. I mean, Trevon Boykin brings some athleticism but no experience so they're not really sure what they're going to get from him throughout a full game he's played a little bit but it's completely different when you're the starter and all the pressures on you he'll grow up a lot today no question about that and we'll find out who the Iowa State quarterback is as soon as he comes out onto the field they've been keeping that under wraps now all week long we're not sure if it's going to be Jantz or Barnett they have worked interchangeably now the last couple of years Jantz with seven interceptions already this season. Overcrowed the freshman out of Arlington on the kickoff. Iowa State will get it first and no return as Jarvis West watches the ball sail out of the end zone and off to the side. It'll be first and ten for Iowa State. The Cyclones led by head coach Paul Rhodes now in his fourth season. 21 and 21. He's led the program to two bowl games in the last three years. I feel like it's a game show as to who is going to be at quarterback. Barnett, number seven. And it will be Jared Barnett. Now, he is the young man who actually led the team in that incredible upset victory a year ago against Oklahoma State. He gets the nod here. Barnett has thrown just nine passes all season long. He'll throw one here. And incomplete, knocked away. Great coverage on the play by TCU's Kenny Kane, who has played marvelously in now his senior campaign. You know, the reason that Paul Rhodes made that switch at quarterback, one of the, one of the main reasons is interceptions. Steel Jantz, seven interceptions already on the season, just turning the ball over way too much. So they make the switch to Barnett today. He's going to keep it. Probes the right side and gobbles up 
about five yards. JC, when we talk about Iowa State, how about some keys to the game? Well, for Iowa State offensively, they said they have to make some explosive plays. They haven't made very many of those offensively. And then defensively, you've got a young quarterback making his first start in Trayvon Boykin for TCU. You've got to confuse that young man, change your coverages up, show him one thing, drop into something else, see if you can confuse him and force him into a turnover. Third down and five. Barnett toward the sideline, and the pass is right on target, complete at the 49-yard line by Albert Gary. 19-yard pickup. Well, they know that they're going to get some man-to-man -man coverage, and their, their receivers were challenged this week to be able to get open. Last week, they had a lot of trouble with their wide receivers not being able to beat man-to-man -man coverage. They were challenged all week, and they come out and they make a play early in this game. Fresh set of downs now for Iowa State. Juggled, now launches deep downfield, has a man at the 20, and into the end zone for the touchdown is Josh Lenz. Wow, 51 yards. Kevin White was on the coverage and got beat over the top. Arceo on the extra point. And just like that, the crowd is silenced here in Fort Worth. First touchdown pass of the year for the redshirt sophomore, Jared Barnett. And the Cyclones are on the board. Iowa State leading at things early on here in Fort Worth, Texas, seven to nothing. But I tell you, Iowa State looked great on that opening drive, especially throwing the ball. So if they thought that Barnett was more of a running quarterback than a throwing quarterback, so they played a lot of man coverage and loaded the box, well, they found out that he could throw the ball very accurately. TCU dangerous on special teams. Carter and Dawson back to receive. Carter bobbles it. And then we'll take a knee. So the Horn Frogs will get it from the 25-yard line. Early going first quarter trailing 7 to nothing. Our Academy Sports and Outdoors Bright Stuff player for TCU is... Trevon Boykin. He's the guy today. He's got to run this offense and run this team. The thing about it is he's just got to make sure that he doesn't try to do too much in his first career start. Just allow the game to come to him. He's got a lot of athletic ability. Just don't try to do too much and, and turn the ball over. Boykin, the freshman, hands it off. And not much doing straight up the gut as Andre Dean sticking his nose into the pile, but didn't get much of a push from that offensive line. Offensive line has been a question mark this year for TCU. They've had a lot of changes. They've had to battle a lot of adversity, and so far, that's probably been the weakness of this offense through the first quarter of the season. Now second down and 14. As time fires, intercepted at the 43-yard line. That is Jacques Washington, their leader, from the free safety spot who has played terrific football this season. And what happened there, Mike, is Iowa State just drops back in zone coverage and they read the eyes of the young quarterback. Look at the young quarterback. He's eyeing his receivers the entire way. And Jacquez Washington playing the middle of the field free safety just reads his, reads Boykin's eyes and just goes right to the football. And it's an easy interception. Intended for Cattle on the back. What an easy pick for Iowa State. Great field position. Barnett keeps it. Shuffles the feet and picks up about three. David Pearson on the stop. You know, going back to Boykin. One of the things that young quarterbacks have to understand is you can't stare down your receiver. You got to look guys off.
Quick pass in the flat on the 45, and then he is pummeled. That's Horn, one of their top wideouts. Yeah, but Mike, going back to the interception by Trevon Boykin, watch his head and his eyes. Immediately goes to his left, looking, staring down the receiver, and then the free safety. Look at his eyes. Look at Boykin's eyes. Never looks off the free safety at all. So the free safety just drifts right where his eyes are looking and just jumps right in the passing lane for an easy interception. Young quarterbacks have got to understand that those three safeties, you got to look them off and then come back to your receiver. On third and five. Over the middle, tipped up in the air. And offensive lineman came diving in and actually caught that. That's the left tackle, Carter Bukowski. But it will be well shy of the marker. See, Barnett's just going to try to fire this one in to run the tight end, number 84. Just, just not a good decision there. Not really much or anywhere to throw the ball. Arceo from 46 yards. He was hitting him from 50 easily in pregame. Kick is on the way. Has plenty of leg, and it is true. And Iowa State comes into this ball game an underdog. A touchdown on the last drive, and then off the turnover, three more points here. A 10 0 lead with 9.38 to play in the first quarter. Paul Rhodes, we told you he's good for a big upset every year. Right now, his squad on top by 10. Boykin coming out when we return. Meanwhile, TCU trying to scratch, trailing at 10 0. Here's Dawson. Dawson to the outside, across the 30, and lunging forward. Past the 36, down near the 39-yard line. The kicker, Arceo, was the man on the tackle. And again, the story of the day for TCU. They've had to go to their backup quarterback, a freshman, because that man, Casey Paul Hall, who right now is the fifth leading passer in the nation, all time in terms of active players. Nobody has a better number than the 163.1 he's put on the board. But again, trouble once again with alcohol has kept him out of the lineup, suspended indefinitely, and obviously, this is a major concern for this offense. It has to be. You know, now you go to, with Trevon Boykin, young guy making his first career start. They've had to simplify some things offensively to make it easy on TCU to the ground on first down. And stacked up near the line is Catalan. I'll tell you who we haven't seen is 29, Matthew Tucker, who's been nursing that ankle injury. They told us they expected him to play, but we haven't seen him do much today. Yeah, and it's a big loss with him being out. I mean, they've already lost Wayman James. They're leading running back from last year and was leading the first couple games. They lose him. And then Matthew Tucker, now they lose him, who was the second leading rusher. And now they're down to Catalan, who's really their third string running back. Second string quarterback, third string running back. And the quarterback is going to tuck it and run. Gets a block near the 40, has the first down inside the 35 and down to the 34-yard line. Beautiful play there by Trevon Boykin. Well, you know this is what he can give you. When things break down, he can pull the ball down and just find the crease and use his legs to make a big play. And that's something that, as a defense, you don't account for. You know, and that's why when you have a quarterback that is, is as mobile as Boykin is, so oftentimes he breaks out of there and it's more on passing plays than it is the zone read because now you're playing run. It's when you drop in pass coverage, especially in man coverage, and now he takes off and runs. That's when he really hurts you defensively. On first down with time. Deep ball, jump ball, incomplete intended for Carter. When we talk about TCU, JC, a lot of keys for this offense without Paul Hall. Yeah, and I thought early on they were going to have to get their running game going, but now obviously without Matthew Tucker, it's going to be a lot tougher to get that running game going. And then defensively, they need to create turnovers. That's what they have been uh, doing all year, doing a great job of it. They needed to continue to create turnovers, take the ball away from Iowa State. Quarterback keeper on first down. Boykin lowers the shoulder, staggers forward for about three. Henry Simon on the tackle for Iowa State. You know, with Boykin, I think they've got to give him some 
easier throws. A lot of his throws have been down the field, and I'm not quite sure if he's comfortable enough yet for that. They've got to get him in a rhythm, get him some easy throws, get him going, get him warmed up, settle down, then start to throw the ball down the field. But every time he's thrown it down the field, the ball, it's not been a good throw. And uh, he's already thrown one interception and close to another one just there a couple plays ago. On third and eighth. Under duress. Throws up in the middle, caught. Inside the 15 and down to the six yard line. That is Cam White. 26 yards and a first down. And that's an impressive play by a young quarterback because normally when you have a guy like Boykin that pulls it down, and number 88 outside is Cam White. Watch him just stay alive. Just breaks off his route, stays alive in the middle of the field, and gets friendly to the quarterback. That's what you call getting friendly, just finding an open spot and allow your quarterback to throw you the ball. But how about Boykin keeping his eyes down the field? Got him here, a little option play, a late toss, and a touchdown! Andre Dean, the former UCLA Bruin. He waited till the last possible second to pitch the football. Yeah, two big plays back to back by Trevon Boykin. One on the scramble and the throw to Cam White. And then here, the next play on the option just holds it to the last minute, takes a shot, and pitches it out to Dean for a touchdown. So a big drive for TCU, who had really struggled offensively in this quarter. Over Chrome on for the extra point and knocks it through with 150 to play in the first quarter. West and Neely back deep for Iowa State. This is West. And they'll take it out to the 25 as we check in with Warren McKeeman. Thanks, Mike, and TCU head coach Gary Patterson pulling Boykin aside, telling him he's pleased with his play so far. He wants him to keep it up, but he wants him to take a little bit more of a command of the huddle, and that's something that they talked about coming into this game. So far, though, he likes what he's seeing, and then on defense, he keeps asking his guys if they're all right and telling them, hey, we're still in this. Don't worry. Mike. All right. Thank you much, Laura. One of the things both Gary Patterson and the offensive coordinator Jared Anderson told us that no, we need Boykin to play fast. We need him to command the huddle. Not have to slow things down for that offense as Iowa State is slowed down on first down. Yeah, and it's more so just get out of the huddle, get the play called, get to the line of scrimmage with enough time so that he's not rushed. He can survey the defense and, and try to figure out what they're doing to him as opposed to getting out of, out of the huddle with eight seconds left and now they all he has to do is just hurry up and get the snap off doesn't have time to really survey the defense. Meanwhile the quarterback shuffle still on for the Cyclones Barnett back in the game and out of the gun. Home run ball over the middle has led streaking and he catches it at the 35 one man to beat touchdown Iowa State. 74 yards, second grab for Lenz. They get that matchup, Lenz on Kevin White, number 25, and he beats him again for another huge explosive play. And that's what they talked about they needed to have from their offense is explosive plays and touchdowns. And they've gotten two of them today already. Extra point is missed by our sale wide. So it is 16 to 7. But how about the passing game so far today for the Cyclones? Well, the middle of the field is left wide open. No safety in the middle of the field. So it's one on one. And now Barnett's able to just throw that ball out in front and allow Lenz just to run under the football and, and away from Kevin White. Watch right here, just man coverage. He just gives White a head fake to the outside and just runs right by him. The problem is Kevin White allowed him to break his cushion down so quickly that he doesn't have time to react to anything. 
And a great ball by Barnett. Just throw that ball out in front with air under it and allow your receiver to run under the football. And they've got another huge explosive play. Well, Josh Lenz came into this game now in his senior campaign with five career touchdown receptions. He has two already in the first quarter, one for 51, and that one for 74 yards. This is Dawson. Running behind a convoy and brought down at the 15. 174 yards already for Iowa State. And we haven't even played 14 minutes of the first quarter. Okay, big explosive plays. That's what they wanted. That's what they're getting. Dean straight ahead on first down. A couple of tough yards. Iowa State typically, they like the game in the 20s. They like a low-scoring affair. They rely so heavily on that defense. But the offense has come up with a couple of huge pass plays. Both quarterbacks have chipped in. On second down, Dean actually goes backwards, a loss on the play. Iowa State defensively doing a good job. Their front four just attacking the line of scrimmage, being strong at the point of attack, and then on the back end, just playing zone coverage. Everybody just all eyes on the football and keep the football in front and react to what you see and they've done a good job so far. Well that is the man of the hour. Number 19 Josh Lenz in his senior year already with two long touchdown receptions as the first quarter dominated by the Cyclones comes to an end. Can TCU march back? We'll find out second quarter action coming up. Now it's been a first quarter dominated by Iowa State as we get to start for quarter number two here from Fort Worth. And as you would imagine, statistically, much like the scoreboard, dominated by the Cyclones. How about yards per play? 11.6 for Iowa State. Yeah, when you can make big passing plays down the field, explosive plays. Look at that, 153 yards passing in the first quarter. That means good things for Iowa State. All kinds of time on third and eight, but the throw is through the hands of Brandon Carter. There was some late contact, and there is a flag all the way back near the 38-yard line. Personal foul, number 38 defense. 15-yard penalty, first down. And that's who they call it on, and Paul Rhodes is livid. See, Majid, they're just playing zone coverage again. The receiver just keeps running. And that's tough because if you're reacting to the ball, he doesn't lower his helmet. There's no helmet to helmet contact or anything. It's tough to pull up on plays like that. And he actually did not follow through on the hit. Meanwhile, on first down, pass is complete. And nifty running there by Brandon Carter, weaving his way to a first down. Empty backfield on first down. And this time, Boykin can't get away from the grip of the big defensive tackle, Jake McDonough. McDonough might be their best defensive lineman. So they don't, he doesn't really realize how strong he can be. Watch him, great swim move by a big guy right there. That's 290 pounds, 6'5", with good feet. That good swim move, good arm action. Gets right in the face of Boykin. Blew right by Eric Tausch, the guard. This TCU offensive line has been a little bit leaky this year. Boykin racing to the sideline near the original line of scrimmage. Got a little help going out of bounds by Jake Knott. A lot of time left in this ball game, obviously, but it's a third down and 11. Your TCU, you're struggling on offense. Iowa State obviously has come to play. It'd be nice here for the Horn Frogs to keep this drive alive. Go 
Blake with all kinds of time and delivers a strike to the 45. Stiff arm and out of bounds at the 30 by Brandon Carter. He's back and he looked just fine on that play for 38 yards. Yeah, and that play looked like it wasn't going to work because two receivers are right next to each other. Sky Dawson, number 11, and Brandon Carter. Watch how close the receivers are together. Sky Carter's underneath, and then Boykin does a great job of just finding Brandon Carter over the top for a big play. From the 31. To the ground game, good haul on the right side. Stiff arm again, it's Dean. Finally wrestled out of bounds inside the 10 by Washington. And now a late penalty flag near the 10 yard line. Watch Andre Dean, number 30, the zone read. Watch the stiff arm. See the hole right here, good read to give him the ball. Watch the stiff arm coming up right there on Washington. Allows him to get down the field even more. Personal foul, offense, number 69, 15-yard penalty. Oh, my. That is a huge mistake on Avion Collins, the true freshman tackle. They're freshmen. They've been getting some good play out of their freshmen, but today they're getting some freshman mistakes out of those freshmen. Catalan with with two fumbles, and then watch number 69 there in the back, maintaining his block. Just takes them all the way out of bounds and just continues. You know, at some point they're behind the play. There's no need to even continue blocking there. Just let your guy go. He just about put him in the front row. TCU, the 12th most penalized team in college football this year. Nowhere to run for Boykin on that play. Jake Knott had him on radar. All the things that have haunted TCU this season, this game has been a microcosm. They came in with the third most amount of fumbles lost in college football. They've had a couple already. 12th most penalties. Yes, just saw the big personal foul. And their red zone offense, this is something their coaching staff told us. They've really struggled. They've already fumbled it six times inside the red zone. Open target. And they say the ball hit the ground. Intended for Cam White. That'll stop the clock with a minute 23 to go. Third down and nine upcoming. Yeah, they, you see a long throw for Boykin all the way across the field. Ball just comes out. Cam White just doesn't catch it. I mean, he would have been down right there anyway because his knees were down, but still got to catch that ball. Interesting play call here because the last thing you want is a turnover. Third and nine, and it's incomplete. Throw was a little low. Would have been a first down intended for Catalan. Well, he's been a busy, not only running back, but receiver on third down today. Now, Oberchrome is a freshman kicker they like. Now, keep this in mind. Last week in a sloppy game against SMU, they had problems with the snap, had some issues in the kicking game. He's got a great leg, three of three from beyond 40. This one's actually from 38. On the way, and true. Well, that'll make it a one possession game with a minute 14 on the clock, 16 to 10, our score. The TCU gets a field goal after marching down the field 59 yards on 11 plays. West and Neely back to the Cyclones. It'll be West. Russell down at the 32 yard line. Barnett takes a knee, and that 
will be the final play of the first half. Iowa State comes in against the 15th ranked team in the nation, takes advantage of three TCU turnovers, puts up a quick 16 points, and the Cyclones will take a six point lead into the locker room. As you see, Gary Patterson lecturing his team right now. Let's check in with Laura McKeeman. Thanks, Mike. Coach, you said explosive plays would be crucial. You got a 51 yard and 74 yard touchdown pass from Barnett. Have you been pleased with your offense so far? Yeah, I have been pleased with them. More, more plays with the uh, overall execution and, and protecting the ball until, until that last interception. Um, but, but, they're, but they're playing good team offense. TCU is playing a second string quarterback, third string running back, but they've shown they can get in a rhythm. What would you tell your defense to capitalize on their youth in the second half? Well, we got to keep playing team defense. Uh, that's what we've done a nice job of through four games and, and a half now. Everybody doing their responsibility, executing where they're supposed to be against the 13th ranked team in the country that has the longest winning streak in the country. All right, thank you, Coach. Halftime in Fort Worth with a score 16 to 10, Iowa State looking for an upset. Entertaining first half here from Fort Worth, Iowa State trying to pull off the upset. The Cyclones lead it by a score of 16 to 10. And as we told you, the first ever Big 12 home game for TCU. And JC, I tell you what, this Iowa State team put a scare into the Horn Frogs. And it started from the opening drive on. I mean, Iowa State made big plays. And how about this one to Josh Lynch? Almost a fumble snap there and turns into a 51 yard touchdown pass from Barnett to Lynch and look at the great route on the post route he beats Kevin White and this one goes for 74 yards and a touchdown and Iowa State was rolling early how about Trevon Boykin the young quarterback making his first start started out slowly but then started to make some plays that one to Cam White and then a great job on the option to Andre Dean for the touchdown. And as we take a look at our halftime stats presented by the principal financial group, all these numbers pretty much even. The biggest number on the board for TCU, the three turnovers, that really changed the complexion of the game early on. Give TCU credit, they fought back to make it a one possession game. And of course, the Horn Frogs will get it first in the second half as we send it back down to the field with Laura McKeeman. Mike, you referenced those three turnovers, and Gary Patterson told me they have to take care of the football. He said that was his biggest message to the team in halftime. He also said we can't give up those big plays. He told his team as well, look, we're losing this game 16-10. to We just need one more touchdown to win it 17-16. Mike? Now, sometimes great teams have to win football games a little bit uglier than they'd like. That might be the case today for TCU, who is playing shorthanded without their starting quarterback top two running backs they've been nicked up a little bit at receiver today as well Dawson and Boyce back to receive it's Sky Dawson number 11 and he turns the corner puts on the brakes accelerates and takes it all the way to the 40 yard line nifty return for Sky Dawson the senior 34 yard return as you see the first half possessions for the Horn Frogs it started off ugly the pick the punt and a touchdown, another punt, two consecutive fumbles, including one inside the five-yard line, the field goal near the end of the half. That made it a 16-10 ball game. But the question now, JC, will this offense start to catch fire here in half number two? Yeah, and you know, if you take away those two fumbles and they get points out of those drives, offensively, they don't look that bad. But I, coming out the first play of the second half, big Jake McDonough with the sack. So As you take a look at the quarterback comparison for Barnett and Boykin, at times they both look sharp, but other times some mistakes that have been costly. The turnovers, each one throwing a pick. And JC, you mentioned it a couple of times. Sometimes Boykin just waits too long before he throws the football. Yeah, but who'd have thought that those numbers would look so similar after the way that Barnett started the game with the big long touchdown? But take away those two big plays and Iowa State hasn't done a whole lot offensively themselves. Andre Dean on the carry who came in from UCLA. He spent one year out in Los Angeles. He was a parade All-American in high school and he actually played his high school football at Katy High. He was a teammate of Andy Dalton, the former TCU Horned Frog now of course in the National Football League. And getting a lot more playing time since Catalan, BJ Catalan had those two fumbles late in the first half. The 
probably took some points off the board for TCU. Now we see more of Andre Dean. On third and 17. And not going to get it done. Iowa State in hot pursuit of Boykin, who didn't take a whole lot of time before he decided to tuck and run. George on the stop for the Cyclones. Yeah, and not a good series for TCU to start the second half. I mean, you would think that they would have made some adjustments in the locker room to come out and have a much better possession than that, but it starts out with a sack and goes downhill from there. Blinken limping a little bit off the field after that last hit. This couldn't work out perfectly, and they're unable to down it at the one yard line. Gamble back there as well for the Horn Frogs as you see the drive chart for Iowa State. Well, it was looking really good. Three out of the four, three out of the first four drives, they put points on the board and then three consecutive punts, then the turnover right before the half. And off left side, big hole down the sideline. Nifty cut back at the 45 and written down at the 36 is Aaron Horn. Sam Carter might have saved a touchdown. 33 yards. And just another way really to, to get to a toss sweep. They have three backs in the backfield and two become lead blockers. It turns into a big play. Lens on the catch. Breaks free. And he'll have a first down out of bounds at the 24 as Iowa State going no huddle and hurry up offense. Yeah, and how about the block by number 84, Ernest Brunt, the tight end that's playing in the slot down at the bottom. TCU unable to substitute. Big hole up the middle. Inside the 10, the 5, and down at the one-yard line is James White. Now how different is Iowa State's first possession of the second half offensively versus TCU? Looks like they made some adjustments. Racing to the line, it's White again. And he is stonewalled at the one. For the first time in this drive, the Horn Frogs are able to make a substitution. You see the red zone offense for Iowa State. Nine touchdowns and 15 opportunities, three turnovers. Second and goal, slant. Lens touchdown Cyclones give them the hat trick. How about Josh Lens? Man, too easy there. He just gives Jason Verrett a quick outside move and runs the slant, and it's just an easy throw for Barnett for the touchdown. Arceo punches home the extra point, and the crowd is silenced here in Fort Worth. 23 to 10 after an 80-yard drive. Eight plays, 2.30 off the clock, and Josh Lenz is on fire. The jack-of-the-box scoring drive for the Cyclones. Eight plays, 80 yards, two and a half minutes off the clock, and... Number 19 has made him count today. He's only caught four balls, but three of them have been for touchdowns. They did a great job of just mixing up their plays. They ran the ball inside, threw the ball quickly to the outside, as well as going down the field. Dawson and Boyce. It will be Sky Dawson from out of the end zone. Oh, he's got some running room. Past the 30, shifting his way at the 35. And finally, Lasso down near midfield. Great return by Sky Dawson, 53 yards. And this is what they need. They're going to have to make some plays on special teams to help their offense out. You can see Sky Dawson just running, staying behind boys, trying to find a block, and then making guys miss, just hopping around, making guys miss. Gets the ball all the way past midfield, but they're going to have to make some some plays special teams wise to help this offense out. Boykin hands it off on first down to Cattle on the freshman. And he'll push the pile forward with some help from his offensive line. Not the first one in on the stop. 
keys to the game for TCU. Are they getting it done, JC? Yeah, well, we said they had to get their running game going. 99 yards in the first half. You would say that that's pretty good if they just hang on to the football and then create turnovers. Haven't been able to do that. We've given the ball away more than they've taken it away, and it's really hurt them. Boykin hands it off. Again, this is Catalan. Again, TCU without the services of Matthew Tucker today with that ankle. Of course, Wayman James already out with the knee. And by now, everybody has heard one of the top storylines nationally, Casey Paul Hall, who was the fifth-rated passer in all of college football, suspended indefinitely. It's all on the shoulders of the freshman, Travon Boykin. Second and two, and nothing there. Stacked up near the line is Dean. Well, some of the top passers in college football, all you got to do is look at the Big 12. Chino Smith just in another atmosphere right now. David Ash, the big game tonight. Those two going head to head. Murray of Georgia, Walsh of Oklahoma State. And of course, Casey Paul Hall was number five before being suspended for this game. And of course, Texas and West Virginia on Fox tonight. Streaking down the sideline, he's got him! It is! Caught, touchdown! Josh Boyce! through the air for his 19th career touchdown reception. They get single coverage outside. And when Iowa State has been at their best, they played zone, but watch Josh Boyce lay out for this football. Tips it to himself. It's his arms under it. I think he's short of the touchdown, though, but he's definitely, definitely made the catch. You can see the grab there is going to be down at the one-yard line. But a great effort by Josh Boyce. After further video review, was a completed catch. However, the runner was downed at the one yard line. It'll be first and goal from the one yard line. So for Josh Boyce, he'll have to settle for 18 career touchdown receptions, at least for the time being. Yeah, and that was definitely the right call. The TCU fans aren't happy about it, but how about the effort? by Josh Boyce just to make that play. Great job, and now they're at the one yard line going in. Full house backfield. Give us to the up back, and touchdown. Sanders, the red shirt freshman. And boy, did TCU need that. Back to a one possession game here in Fort Worth. Again, yeah, just a, a fullback dive right here. You're going to see that ball just right there over the end zone, right there over the end line. Easy call. So it's back to a six point game with 8.20 remaining. It all got cranked up with the pass from Trevon Boykin to the number one target. Josh Boyce laying out, sets up the plunge. 8.20 remaining in the third quarter, 23 to 17. Iowa State on top, Mike Morgan, J.C. Pearson. This is why we love October. A little bit of cold in the air, conference football, good matchup between two quality teams in the Big 12. And the 15th ranked Horn Frogs getting all they can handle from Iowa State thus far. Weston Neely back to receive for the Cyclones. Line drive. Picked up at the five by West. And he fires through, tripped up at the 30 yard line. Iowa State comes in today. They make the switch at quarterback from Steel Jans to Jared Barnett. 
and it's been all good from the first drive on. They've made big explosive plays. Now there's big holes to run through, and now on first down you get five yards of pop, and now you're in second and manageable. You can take a shot here, and you can see TCU trying to hurry and substitute. Not this time, Kenny Kane puts a big bear hug on Chantrell Johnson. Dump off pass. Guess who it is? It's Lenz. And he's wrestled down just short by about a yard, maybe a yard and a half. Nice job on the tackle by Hasley. Yeah, just running under the zone, letting TCU drop back in their zone coverage and just runs that short crosser. Just not enough, though, because when you play zone coverage, everybody's seeing the ball thrown. It's in front of all your guys dropping in coverage and now look at them rally look at all the black jerseys rally to make the tackle shorter at first down penalty flag on the punt they are caught at the 15 time now to check in with laura mckeeman mike as we know tcu currently has the longest win streak in the country there's certainly a sense of urgency on this sideline lots of players standing up trying to get the crowd involved on their side and of course a determination about them they are certainly focused they're looking at each other a lot. Gary Patterson's level of intensity continues to rise as well as he communicates with his players on the bench and then closer to the sideline. Well, they've been here before, and Gary Patterson is no fool. He knows full and well Iowa State is a dangerous team. More on that in a moment. As a, another completion for Josh Boyce here, and that's not what you want to see. Boykin cramping up a little bit. Yeah, that's not a good sign at all. They've actually had to move Matt Brown back to quarterback after he was moved to receiver. It wasn't that long ago, Javon Boykin was working out with the running backs because of the lack of depth and all the injuries there. Second down, big gaping hole straight up the middle and a first down for Catalan before Jake Knott stops him in his tracks. All right, Kevin, thank you so much. That's one of my surprise teams, the Florida Gators. And a huge win for Coach Muschamp, as you see the pass caught. A penalty flag there. Sky Dawson in a wrestling match downfield comes away with it. We'll check the penalty. Pass interference, defense, number 10. The penalties declined. The result of the play is a catch. First and 10. And you can see Washington again just grabbing the arm. You know, a lot of fighting there. And really, not a lot going on there between the two. You know, you could have easily let that, let that go. It still was going to be a catch anyway. Second and long. Trying to turn the corner. Can't do it. Dean tracked down by A.J. Klein. Oh, what a great play that was by Klein because I thought Dean. Had a lot of room to run out there, and if Klein doesn't make that play, that's a huge play for Andre Dean. Watch how much room Andre Dean's going to have up top. But look at number 47 come and makes that tackle from behind. Now between Klein and Knott, you're talking about nearly 600 career tackles. One of the best tandems of linebackers in all of college football. So a third and 14 now for the Horn Frogs. Receiver falls, and the pass falls incomplete. Carter was the intended target. Well, we talked about the strength of the leg of the freshman kicker out of Arlington, Texas, Jaden Obercrow. This is well within his range. Officially a 50 yarder from the hash. Kick is on the way. And it is perfect. Well, they've got a special weapon for years to come in that man, Jaden Overgrove.
snap good, hold perfect, and the kick, a thing of beauty as it sails through. Three-point game from Fort Worth. Cyclones. Nothing to do there as Jarvis West will take a knee. And a fresh set of downs for the Cyclones. Tough shot, a big lick on Barnett. And now a late penalty flag. And maybe too hard of a shot, according to the Zebras. Wow. Personal foul, number 98. John Lewis. Oh, wow. I Th thought it was going to be on the defensive back that was coming up to make the play. But maybe something happened on the back end. 30 yards of penalties on two personal fouls. And penalties have been a problem for TCU, especially the last couple of weeks. 11 penalties against Virginia, 13 penalties last week against SMU. A solid run on first down. James White. A chorus of boos here at Amon Carter Stadium. If you're Iowa State, you've gotten an early gift here as we wind down the third quarter of play. Iowa State up three, trying to pull off another upset. Paul Rhodes and company seem to do it every year. This time trying to do it against the team with the nation's longest winning streak. <laughs> Iowa State 23, TCU 20. You're watching Fox College Football. Final 15 minutes here from Fort Worth, Texas. Iowa State leading TCU 23 to 20 as we look at the stats through three quarters of play. Relatively even, much like the score, time of possession starting to tilt towards TCU. And they'd probably have the football now had it not been for a pair of personal foul penalties. That's put the Cyclones inside the 35 of the Horn Frogs. This is second down and six. Big roll, big hole behind the left side of that line for James White. And that'll move the chains. It's White again, plowing ahead for about three. Well, anybody that follows college football, this would be a surprise, but not a shocker. Because if you see what Iowa State has done under Paul Rhodes last year, we mentioned the huge upset over Oklahoma State. How about the year before defeating 22nd ranked Texas 28-21? And 2009, they forced eight turnovers in a win over Nebraska. Don't forget they beat in-state rival Iowa last year as well. Barnett rolling out, going to take it himself, has the 15 and strolls out of bounds near the marker. And you know, those big wins that they've had, Coach Rhodes said, you know, they, they expect to win games. You know, even though they may be the underdog in all the games they play from here on out, they expect to win. And that's why they were so upset that they lost the game to Texas Tech last week because they expected to win that game. So. You know, Iowa State is a different team under Paul Rhodes than they were back in the day when, you know, people would look at them on the schedule and think it's an automatic win. Not anymore. He's done a tremendous job after coming from Auburn where he was the defensive coordinator in 08. Good. Timeout. Iowa State. Their first timeout. And we'll take it with them. 1346 to play three-point game and the Cyclones threatening. <laughs> All new episode, Mondays, 11 p.m. Eastern, 8 Pacific.
It's been a tremendous game thus far. Damon Carter Stadium, Fort Worth, Texas, where the Horned Frogs call home. And right now they have the nation's longest winning streak of 12 games. It's in jeopardy. Iowa State up three on the move with a first and 10 upcoming. Play action looking for Lenz again and knocked away by Jason Verrett. Thought they got a little greedy on this play. Gonna see Lenz just gonna come down and run the corner route. Think they got a little greedy here trying to get the big play against the zone of TCU. They've been doing a great job of just running the football, taking what the defense gives them. That time they tried to hit the home run and now they got themselves in a second and 10 situation. Jason Barrett as a player leads the league and passes defended. Nice job on the coverage there. Little razzle dazzle, wide open man at the five. Touchdown Cyclones, Brun walks in. And guess who threw it? The guy who has caught three, just threw a touchdown pass. Wow, what a great time for a gadget play. How about that? I just said I thought they got greedy and trying to go down the field the lens they then they come back with a gadget off of a re reverse pass for a touchdown. This crowd is stunned. Ten point lead for the Cyclones. Paul Rhodes. Break it out. The trick plays. It's Josh Lenz the wide out on the touchdown pass. Welcome back Iowa State 30 TCU 20. I think can you have a bigger day than what Josh Lentz is having right now. This is one he'll certainly remember for a long time to come. He has accounted for four touchdowns. All four touchdowns to the Cyclones today. 10 point lead and the Horn Frogs will start it from the 25 yard line. And there's no need to panic yet if you're TCU plenty of time like you said just run your offense don't try to force anything just yet. Boykin running for his life throws it downfield and a leaping catch almost breaks an ankle tackle Brandon Carter but if he gets out of that tackle a little sooner he's gone and Boykin is cramping once again down on the field. Wow. But what a great play by a young guy. For Von Boykin. Just running around trying to make some things happen. No panic whatsoever. And just keeps his eyes down the field and comes up with a huge play for TCU. Takes a shot at the end. Might not have been an ill might have been an ill advised pass but Dion Broomfield 26 falls down and allows Brandon Carter to make the play. Now keep in mind if they have to go to the backup quarterback you'd be looking at number 10 Matt Brown who has essentially been a wide receiver this year. Ten point game here in Dallas and right now Trevon Boykin is the story whether or not he can keep those cramps from plaguing him the rest of the way here with more is Laura McKeeman. Yeah Mike Trevon Boykin trying to get these cramps rolled out they have a little pipe looking thing that they're using to roll on his calves and they're also trying to keep him warm. They have a warming pad a warning a warming compress on one of his calves while rolling the other and it is cold down here. I, I think that may have something to do with this but they're trying to hydrate him as well and of course TCU really needs him to go back in the game. Yeah, just as he was about to heat up Catalan straight up the gut so it's not just one leg that he's got to deal with JC it's two. Yeah which makes it a lot tougher and, and now for TCU offensively you, you they can't feel comfortable letting Moore throw the ball because he hasn't even been practicing really at quarterback. He's been a receiver. And you, you see his numbers there from last season. He's run the ball 24 times. So if you're Iowa State, you've got to be thinking run, run, run all the way here. They run it wide. Oh, great. 
great move at the 30. Little jump cut there by Sky Dawson. Shoved out of bounds by Reeves, but not before first down yardage. Yeah, if you're thinking run, you got to come up and stop it, though. Jansen Watson, watch Jansen Watson, number two. The, the cornerback here. He's got to step up and make that tackle right there. You make the tackle, and it's a, a two yard gain. You miss the tackle, and now you give up a first down. So you might be thinking run, but you still got to come up and make the tackles. Little pitch play. 35. 25 rather and inside the 20 down to the 18 and if you're just joining us again Casey Paul Hall ineligible for this game suspended indefinitely they had the start Trevon Boykin the redshirt freshman his first career start now he's having cramping issues so they're going to Matt Brown who's been playing wide receiver this season Matt Brown I think I called him more earlier on huh? Matt Moore <laughs> I think that guy plays in the NFL somewhere Oregon State Beaver. Yeah. Thank you. Miami Dolphins. Second and six. Pretty good game tackling there by Iowa State. Dean falls forward for maybe a yard, not much. Going to be third and short as we have more with Laura. Guys, it looks like Trevon Boykin is going to try to go back in the game. They pulled down his socks to try to get him more warmth on those calves. And now he's pacing the sideline. Looks like he's trying to get ready to go back in as soon as possible. TCU is four of ten on third down. This is third down and four. Now do you let Brown throw the ball? Third and four. If I'm Iowa State, I'm still thinking run. Now man up outside. Looks like they tried kind of a naked bootleg. Iowa State reads it, and A.J. Klein buries him. Not fooled at all. You bring pressure, and if it's not a run, well, then you the pressure still is there for, on the quarterback. Brown has nowhere to go. A.J. Klein comes up with the big play. Now, he told you how good Oberchrome's leg is. Keep in mind, he's still a freshman. This is a pressure kick. Officially from 39. Perfect. Back to a one possession game. Paul Rhodes happy to hold him to three. TCU happy to be within one score. Great game here from Fort Worth. 30 to 23, our score. With J.C. Pearson and Laura McKeeman, I'm Mike Morgan. Great to be with you here from Fort Worth, Texas. This is why we love the month of October. Conference games, Iowa State, TCU, back and forth affair. Seven-point ball game. Still plenty of time remaining. 9.51 on the clock. And another touchback for Jarvis West. TCU allowing 30 points. They allowed 29 coming in. They only allowed three touchdowns all year. Josh Lenz has accounted for four as Johnson is hit behind the line of scrimmage. Good pursuit there by that TCU defense led by the safety, Sam Carter. Second and 12. Good head of steam. And out to the 30 yard line is Chantrell Johnson. And another update on Boykin from Laura. Mike Trevon Boykin just got both of his legs massaged. Also, lots of hydration. And the head athletic trainer for TCU tells me that Boykin is good to go back in the game. So we may see him on TCU's next offensive drive. Certainly good news. For TCU, be better news if they can stop the Cyclones here on third and five. Here comes the blitz, tipped in the air and incomplete. And now a very late penalty flag from the complete opposite side of the play. Like he's calling Holden. Holden, offense number 21. Penalties to climb, fourth down. 
That was on Johnson, and when the TCU defense needed to step it up the most, they did. Yeah, you can see. That's Fields, number 95, the freshman. Vontae coming up with another huge play, not just tackles for losses or sacks. That's a huge deflection right there. He was a special looking freshman leading the league in sacks and tackles for loss as Dawson calls for the fair catch from the 29 yard line. And now, as you just heard Laura tell us, the Cavs, the leg muscles of Trevon Boykin, they're good to go, at least for the time being. Conservative pass to Catalan. Klein wraps him up after about a yard. Yeah, we've seen that play a number of times in the first half. Go for big yards. And uh, one of the times, Catalan fumbled after a big game. So they go back to that, but this time Iowa State snuffs it out. TCU's best weapon at receivers at the bottom of your screen, Josh Boyce. Devontae Fields of TCU knocked one down just a series ago, and this time David Irving, he blocks it, catches it, and scores. That was a Houdini act. How in the world did he hold on to that football? <laughs> and the crowd is stunned once again. Extra point good back to a two possession game all the momentum that TCU garnered right back on the side of Iowa State. Yeah quickly. I mean David Irving. Six foot seven. Number 87 right there on the right side of your screen just jumps up deflects it catches it and scores. Well, they call that the trifecta something like that huh. <laughs> Is the biggest play of his career for sure. Yeah, and of this game. <laughs> you know, at, at this point. You know, like TCU had some momentum going, had a chance to go down the field, and he comes up with the trifecta. Horn Frogs with Dawson on the return. Breaks one tackle. And gets it out to the 23 yard line. Watch the Iowa State bench. After this play by David Irving, I think there's a little emotion in this game. <laughs> that's what college. That's what college football is all about, right there. You, you never see that in the NFL unless it's a, a huge game, a playoff win, or, or Super Bowl. That's what makes college football so exciting. He didn't have a dance plan, nothing choreographed, just pure emotion. And excitement right now on the Iowa State sideline. Four man rush. Boykin throws that one away. Our Coors Light game summary of this game, which has had a little bit of everything. Josh Lenz, well, he caught three touchdown passes. He's thrown a touchdown pass. David Irving, what could be the play of the game with the 21 yard touchdown. Rece uh, interception return off the deflection. Boykin, you know, he's been solid, hadn't been flawless, but the freshman has shown some great poise in this game while battling cramps here in the second half. But four turnovers by TCU. Gaping hole up the middle for Catalan. And right now, at this point in the game, Iowa State's okay with giving up those runs inside and making the tackles. Just they don't want to give up anything big. Nothing over the top, nothing easy. The clock is is on their side right now. It's running. If they can just make TCU continue to have to run the ball six, seven yards at a time, the clock is eventually going to run out on them. 
third and short. They go with that pitch play again, and a penalty flag flies from about 30 yards in the Iowa State secondary. Iowa State has elected the option to decline the penalty. Fourth down. There you go, Nostradamus <laughs> in full effect. <laughs> uh, even a blind squirrel finds yeah. a nut every now and then. Well, that's obviously the percentage play for Paul Rhodes. Now, if you stop him here, you're in the driver's seat. Yeah. But now you, you give him, it, it's, what is it, fourth and four, as opposed to pushing him back third and 19. Great catch, first down, and TCU keeps the drive alive. Sky Dawson on the reception. Yeah, and I'm sure right now Paul Rhodes is wishing. Well, maybe I should have taken that penalty and pushed him back and gave him third down over again, but it's third and 19 as opposed to fourth and four. It's too late now. TCU converted. He's got a new set of downs. Five in the pattern on first down. Caught at the 25 by Boyce, and again, that clock will keep going. Yeah, at some point in time, you got to go down the field. The clock is starting to become your enemy. Down two, two touchdowns. TCU does have two timeouts left. They'll try to hold on to them a little bit longer. On second down to the end zone. Incomplete in and out of the hands of Brown who goes 6-4. It looked like he won that jump ball, just couldn't hold on. Darius Brown here. Oh, great job there though at the end by Jansen Watson. Watch Jansen Watson, never gives up on the ball. Look at that right hand, comes back and strips the ball away from Ladarius Brown. That's what you got to do. You can't give up on it. You're giving up a lot of, of inches, about six inches there in height and reach, but you can't give up on it. Third and three. Pass caught, and that'll stop the clock momentarily for the first down as Josh Boyce with another reception. Boykin crushed as he throws it Basically. incomplete. Boy, he absolutely took a wallop by Ben Durbin. Yeah, Ben Durbin just comes around the end. They run a stunt and watch him. Number 15 just comes right off the end. Basically. And unloads on Boykin. I'll tell you what, Trevon Boykin is showing me some toughness today. Cramps taking shots. First ever start. Good looking player. Little inside screen, a lot of daylight up the middle. And finally tackled inside the 10 is Brandon Carter. Another stop for Jake Knott. Good play. Iowa State playing that zone, dropping off. And they just run that, that inside bubble screen. I thought Brandon Carter was going to get to the end zone. Boykin. Hands it off. Not much there for Dean, and that keeps the clock rolling. Yeah. You got to get up. You got to get lined up and get going here. Under three minutes to go. This is what they talked about the concern with Boykin getting the plays in, breaking the huddle quickly. Right now, this is taking entirely too long. Toward the corner, and that one just got away from him. Yeah, too hard. <laughs> Mike Morgan, J.C. Pearson with you here in Fort Worth, Texas. Iowa State trying to put an end to the nation's longest winning streak. Don't forget following our ball game on Fox, Texas, and West Virginia. Boykin, end zone through the hands of Brown. He's got to haul that in. Yeah, that's tough. Might have had a little too much heat on it. Boykin was getting pressured. Had a guy coming right in his face, so he had to get rid of that ball. Here comes A.J. Klein off the edge, so he had to get rid of that football. Might have put a little too much heat on it. Yeah, just 
little bit too far out in front. It would have been a tough catch for Ladarius Brown. Could be the ball game right here. Fourth down and goal. Oh. Intercepted lookout. Foot race. And sidestepping out of bounds is Jake Knott, the senior linebacker. He of over 300 career tackles picks it off and goes 37 yards. Yeah. Eighth career interception. And Trayvon Boykin again just stares at one receiver and then is late throwing the ball and J Jake not just falls right under. Look at him. Look, if you're going to eye him down, the ball needs to be gone right now. But that allowed Jake not time to just slide and slide and get in the passing lane. Look how long it takes him to throw the ball. And Josh Boyce has got to be quicker in his route also. But now the foot race is on. Jake not doesn't want to try Boykin in a foot race, so he just steps out of bounds. What a day for Jake not 13 tackles. That was a a good drive 74 yards. They just couldn't finish it. And that's exactly what Iowa State told us the way they play defense is they just try to keep everything in front and sooner or later they're going to have a chance to make a play to get off the field and that's exactly what happened on that drive. They love Paul Rhodes and Iowa State will love the result of this ball game. Defeating the 15th ranked team in the nation on the road. Sometimes ratings on recruiting classes all that stuff doesn't mean anything if you know how to play the game right. Yeah and like Paul Rhodes told us they expect to win. That's what he's been instilling in these players since he's been there. We saw the graphic of the huge wins they've had throughout the past three years, and they're at the point where they're expecting they're expecting a win. And this is going to be another one that's going to be on the graphic going forward, you know, and on and on. And that's why they were so disappointed in their loss to Texas Tech last week. Jared Barnett started this game in place of Steel Jance. Made the plays that they needed from the quarterback spot. Victory formation for Iowa State. And that'll do it. Paul Rhodes first road win against a top 15 team since 1977. And it'll be party time in Ames, Iowa. Let's check in with Laura McKeeman. Thanks, Mike. Coach, you're no stranger to big upsets, and this time you knock off a team that has the longest win streak in the nation. They have it no more. What can you say about this game? Well, it was a team effort by our kids, and in a long week of preparation, sometimes you get a little bit better focus coming off a loss than you do a win. Our guys came back to work. We, we played a good football team today, and we played a good football game today. The Iowa State Cyclones did. Josh Lynn's three touchdown receptions through a touchdown pass as well. What else can this guy do, and what can you say about his play? Well, he should have ran it in at some point, then, I, I guess, to have a full day's work. Uh, he, he, he's been uh, uh, somewhat disappeared in the last uh, couple games as far as production. It was good to see him show up today. In the fourth quarter, TCU had some momentum going their way, but David Irving with that huge interception, how big was that play in that moment? Well, uh, I, I think that was one that, that uh, put a dagger in it, so to speak, and, and even though they drove down 14 points is, is hard to overcome, especially against a, a defense plan as well as ours was today. What will you tell this team in the locker room after this success and to continue on in the Big 12? <laughs> it's the Big 12. Uh, great job, man. Let's get back to work. All right. Thank you, Coach. <laughs> thank you. All right, thank you so much, Laura, and obviously another big win for Iowa State and Paul Rhodes. Yeah, but he summed it all up right there. It's the Big 12. Enjoy it, but you got another big one next week, and that goes for TCU as well. There is no let up in this league, that's for sure. That's it from Eamon Carter Stadium in Fort Worth. 37-23, Cyclones win it. For J.C. Pearson and Laura McKeeman, I'm Mike Morgan. You've been watching Fox College Football on Fox Sports Network. So long, everybody.